Hello friends, welcome to this video. I am Karnesh Jori and in this video, I will be talking on System 5 message queues. System 5 refers to Unix System 5 Release 1 1983 and message queues were introduced in Unix in that release. So, what's a message queue? A message queue is an inter-process communication mechanism. It is a mechanism using which one process can communicate with another. It is created and managed by the kernel in response to system calls made by processes. So, a process that wants to receive messages can create a message queue for itself and make sure that likely clients know its ID and then wait for messages to come in. Processes that want to communicate with a particular process should know the message queue ID of that process and then send a message to the queue of that process. It is as simple as that. How are the system 5 message queues identified? As an aside, let me say that this video is about system 5 message queues and there is one more type of message queue which is the POS6 message queues. There is another video for POS6 message queues. Message queues, semaphores and shared memory are collectively referred to as inter-process communication mechanisms. There are two categories of inter-process communication mechanisms, the traditional system 5 and the newer POS6. So in Unix and Linux, there are two kinds of message queues, semaphores and shared memory the system 5 and POS6. In this video, I will be talking about the traditional Unix system 5 message queues. So back to the question, how are the system 5 message queues identified? The system 5 message queues are identified by a message queue identifier which is a non-negative integer. How do we get a message queue? We get a message queue by MSG GET system call. In MSG GET, you need to pass two arguments. The first argument is a key. Now this key is known as system5 IPC key. So to get a message queue, you first need a system5 IPC key. There is a function FTOK which gives a system5 IPC key. The arguments to FTOK are a path name and an integer project ID. The path name is a string and must be an existing file in the file system. The project ID is an integer whose least significant last 8 bits are used and these must not be 0. So with FTOK we can get a unique system 5 IPC key for the given two arguments. We can use the system 5 IPC key in a message get to get the message queue. The second parameter of MSG get is message flags. If you specify IPC create, the message queue is created. If IPC EXCL is specified along with IPC create and the message queue already exists, MSG get fails and error number is set to E exist. The lowermost 9 bits of MSG flag are permissions for the message queue similar to the file permissions for owner group and the rest. Execute permissions are not meaningful and are not used. On success, MSG get returns the message queue identifier. We have seen that you first get in system 5 IPC key using FTOK and then use that key in MSG get to get a system 5 message queue. There is another way. You can use a special key IPC private in the MSG get call to create a new queue. The queue is created but no other process knows its ID. So a process that makes a queue with IPC private sends its queue ID in a message for receiver to respond to. This is useful for clients. Clients send their message queue ID in a request to server and server uses this queue ID to send response. We will be using IPC private for clients later on in an example in this video.
the MSG CTL call is for control operations on a message queue. MSQ ID is the message queue ID. The next argument is the integer command. The command can be one of IPC RM ID, IPC stat, and IPC set. When the command is IPC RMD, the message queue is removed. The command IPC stat gives the status of the message queue in a structure pointed by buff. For each message queue, the kernel maintains a data structure MSQ IDDS. The first element in MSQ IDDS is MSG perm ownership and permissions structure, which is I IPC PRM struct IPC PRM. Struct IPC PRM has got key, UID, user ID of the owner, GID, group ID of the owner, CUID, user ID of the creator, CGID, group ID of the creator, mode, which is the permissions and sequence number. So that is the struct IPC PRM, ownership and permissions. Next, there is MSG S time, time of last message send, msg r time, time of last message received, msg c time, time of last change, msg c bytes, current number of bytes in the queue, msg q number, current number of messages in the queue, msg q bytes, maximum number of bytes allowed in the queue, msg lsp id, process id of the last process doing MSG send and MSG LRP ID, process ID of the last process doing MSG receive. These are the members of MSQ ID data structure. As I said, when the command is uh, IPC RM ID, message queue is removed. If the command is IPC stat, the queue data structure is returned in the, in the buffer pointed by buff. When the command is IPC set, you can change some members of the structure. For instance, you can change MSG queue bytes, maximum number of bytes allowed in the queue, UID and GID of the owner and the permissions. These are the values you can change with IPC set and when you change MSG C time of the queue is also updated. MSG SND is the call for sending messages to a queue. MSQ ID is the message queue ID. MSGP is the pointer to the message. The message is a structure having two members, a long integer message type, which must be greater than zero. Message type is followed by message text. Message text can be a structure or an array. The third argument to MSG SND is the message size. The message size is not the size of the entire MSG buff, but it is the size of message text. Now this is important, so you can have a message of size 0, so that message has only a message type and no message text. The last parameter MSG flag is mostly 0. Now if the queue is full, MSG SND would block till there is space. So if you don't like that, you can specify IPC no wait and the call would return immediately with the return value minus 1 and error number set to E again. MSG RCV is the call for receiving messages for a system 5 message queue. MSQ ID is the message queue ID. MSGP points to the buffer where the received message is stored. The third parameter MSGSZ is the space available for message text in the buffer pointed by msgp if the actual message is bigger than msgsz and msg no error is specified in the last argument msg flag the message is truncated and msgsz bytes of message text are returned in the message text member but if msg no error is not specified in msg flag message is not taken of the queue and msg rcv returns minus 1 and error numbers is set to e too big now look at the fourth parameter msg type if msg type is 0 
the first message of the queue is read. So if you are interested in getting messages in the chronological order, you can just specify MSG type as 0. Now this MSG type is quite complicated and I will not describe all the cases but just one case. If MSG type is greater than 0 and the last argument MSG flag does not specify MSG except the first message of that type is returned. If there are no messages in the queue, MSG RCV blocks till a message becomes available. However, if IPC no wait is specified in the MSG flag argument and there is no message in the queue, MSG RCV returns immediately with minus one return value and error number is set to E no MSG. We now have an example of a client server system using system 5 message queues for inter-process communication. The server has a message queue in which clients send request messages. Each client has a message queue in which it gets response from the server. We first look at the server program. The server program starts by making a system 5 IPC key with FTOK. It has got two parameters, server key path name which is a file in the file system slash tmp mq server key and the project id is m the last 8 bits of uh, project ids are, are used and these, these are non-zero so server gets the system 5 ipc key for itself msg q key the server uses use this key to get the message queue msg get with msg get ipc create queue permissions queue permissions are 660 which is read and write for owner and group and server blocks for a message with MSG RCV. Now let's look at client. The client comes up and it makes a queue for itself with MSG get. The client queue is made with the IPC key, IPC private. Then it makes the server, server IPC key with FT OK. It knows server path key path name and project ID. The server QID, it makes a server, it gets a server QID with MSG get server Q key and zero. So it gets the server QID and it makes a message, message type is one. It writes its own QID in the structure, message structure so that server can reply back to it. So the client requests the operator type of message, it reads the message and sends it to server with MSG send. Now server gets a message with MSG RCV. Server gets the message and uh, it does some processing. It finds the length of the message and it appends the length of message to the message. Server gets a client QID from the message. So server responds by sending the message to client QID. It sends the message with, with MSG send. The client blocks for a message from a response from server. It gets the message with MSG RCV and it prints the message on the terminal. This is how the client and server work. We can compile and run the server and client programs. So first I will compile. To run the server, we first need to create the file for first parameter to FTOK. And the file is slash tmp slash mq underscore server underscore key. Now I can run the server and the server is running now. So the first client size of hello world is 11 bytes. The second client the size of this string is 25 bytes. Third client this string is 39 bytes. So this is how the server and client can be running. All the concepts that have been discussed in this video and the source code for programs are available at http colon slash slash bit dot ly slash sysv dash message dash queues. That's all I've got in this video. Thanks very much for watching. Have a good day.